Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Land Rovers Live. As always, I'm Matt, and coming up on this week's show, we went over to see a cider manufacturer to see how they use their Land Rovers. Later on, we'll be taking a look at workshops where this week we start to spot out some oil leaks, and uh, in future episodes, the oil that we take out today will be sent off for testing, and we'll, we'll come back to you with some information on that and what we can do to preserve our oil. As well as that, we've got a competition winner from last week and perhaps a new competition for this week. And as always, if there's anything that you think we've missed on the show, do let us know. I'll put the links on the screen for that, but do get in touch with us. In future weeks, we're going to be starting our new Overland feature where we've got some really exciting things coming up. But I'll take the opportunity now to say well done to the guys from Lizzie Bus, David and Jane, who've completed their five-year Around the World tour. They just arrived home in Birmingham last week, and we're going to be catching up with them in next week's show. But first in the news this week, we've seen a brand new special edition Range Rover brought to you by Land Rover in partnership with Holland & Holland. If you're not familiar with them, they're the people who make shotguns and I'm sure they make other types of guns, but that's the ones that I've seen. Uh, they've come together, not for the first time, to produce a special edition Range Rover. Now about 10 years ago, maybe around that time, Holland & Holland partnered up with Overfinch to produce a special edition Range Rover. They've done the same thing again this time and the results are pretty spectacular. Now the price tag is pretty hefty at £180,000, but I'm sure you'll agree it's a beautiful looking vehicle, even if it doesn't leave all that much room in the back for shopping. There are many of you that wrote in last week to let us know how much you enjoyed the Land Rovers Live Owners Club feature with Flossie. We've got a couple of these in the bag, but we'd really love it if you do let us know and get in touch with us. We'll come down and feature your vehicle. So if your story is as compelling as Flossie's, or you've got a special vehicle that you'd like to showcase, do let us know. Again, I'll put the links on the screen for that. So that's it for the news this week. It's a little bit light on the ground, but on the run-up to Christmas now, we do expect it to get a bit more lively in the weeks ahead. This week, we went over to Black Country 4 before, as usual, and took a look at well, oil changes and spotted some leaks along the way. Let's head over and have a look. So we're here back at Black Country 4 before today to take a look at, well, just where uh, Defender sweats. This one is a fairly typical example. It's a TDI 200, it's done about 200,000 miles as, and has been maintained to a point. It's not a concourse condition one. It's, uh, you struggle to even say it was in really good condition. Um, but most Land Rovers will leak oil from somewhere, so we're going to take a look at some of the places that they do leak. And we'll look on this one because this has got loads of oil leaks. So first off, where I'm standing now is directly underneath the engine. And I would say the most common source of oil leaks that I see is from the actual sump plug itself. When changing oil, we really recommend just replacing that copper washer. It's a matter of pennies to do that, but it's really well, well worth it. A worn copper washer will gradually seep oil out, and before you know it, it's, uh, it's had it. So we're going to drain the oil out of this engine. And as always, our workshop guides are brought to you in partnership with Bearmac. Now on the run up to Christmas, Bear Mac have got a competition of their own going on to win a day out at Land Rover Experience Centre. The competition they've titled Landy Selfie, uh, loosely speaking, they're after a selfie of you with a Land Rover, but there is a catch. You do need to jump onto their Facebook page, we'll put the links below for it, and get one of their Bear Mac stickers in your window first. Now it's a great prize and they're running it for a few more weeks now, I think a couple of months maybe. Um, so do get involved with that. We've seen a load of entries so far, but the actual Landy selfie thing's kind of got a little bit of miss, like this example from Chris Higgins. It's a really great effort, but sadly no Landy in there. And this one from Lena from Heritage Insurance, who incidentally whose vehicle we're in today. She's got the, the Landy bit there and the selfie bit, but no Bear Max sticker. Good effort, chaps. But if you want to see how to enter this competition, we'll put the links on the screen below and all the best with that. Now next up, we're going to head over to, well, a lovely little place that producer Amy found, an artisan cider maker. These first came across our radar from the, the fact they use Land Rovers and things, but uh, when we got there, the Land Rovers sort of failed in, faded into the background as we, uh, as we got involved with some cider tasting. Let's go and see how we got on. <laughs> I think spending many, many hours in a Land Rover, the fact that they're too damned narrow, and they're noisy, and what's worse is the heaters are bloody useless. So you can get cold, you can get wet, you can be uncomfortable, 
what else can I say? Noisy, slow. I kept well away from Land Rovers until I saw this poor Land Rover at the side of the road for 400 quid and I had a look at it and it was so sad and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't pass, I had to buy it and then I had six earlier this year so I don't think I'm really over it yet. My name is Stephen John Orr Cooper and I am the proprietor of Tardy Big Cider. I'm a craft cider maker, or artisan cider maker. Um, I make cider from 100% apple juice. It started in about 1986, and I had two Worcester pomaine trees, or was it three? And they dumped all the fruit on the floor in about three minutes. So the first summer, I shoveled all the fruit into the compost heap. The following year, I was ready for it, and uh, with the use of a car jack, a lump of wood, some 3B2, I made myself a little press, and thumping the apples with a piece of wood, made some juice, and made my first gallon of cider. It tasted mainly of old sack, because I used an old sack to wrap the apples in. And that's how I got started. We have got a draft cider, uh, which is sold either in uh, flagons or in five gallon kegs and bagging boxes. And then we have the bottled conditioned cider range. The bottled conditioned ciders are very much different. They have a greater complexity of flavour, but also they're going to be on the dry spectrum. And by and large, the British public doesn't like dry cider. Even certain ciders which are advertised as dry have more sugar in them than my sweet cider. First of all, catch your apples. Um, you need apples to make cider. Then you have to mill the apples to, to break down the, uh, the structure of the apple. And then you need a press. You don't need a lot of pressure. The press I've got at the moment is only a 50 ton press. But you need to break them down very thoroughly to get the juice. And it's the juice with which you make cider. And people tend to think crushing the apples is cider making. I tend to think of it, that is getting the juice. That's the raw material I need to make my cider. And then the skill of cider making comes in how you guide and, and make the fermentation take place. It's not bad at all. My, my Land Rovers for this business have a number of functions. Let's start one. They fetch apples. So the big, the big long wheelbase, we can throw quite considerable weights in the back. Um, so the big, the big black one I use for fetching stuff. It's a very good tow vehicle because it's powerful. Um, we use a long wheelbase, which is kitted out uh, with a roof rack, with a built-in uh, bar, with a built-in awning. That's used for doing shows where we sell our cider to the public. If it's going to be muddy, we take that one. If it's, a, if it's a good show, we'll take two vehicles and the black vehicle becomes a stock vehicle because it can take a lot of weight. And then all the equipment and chairs and lightweight stuff goes into the, uh, the big blue Land Rover that you saw up at the top. Uh, Florence, uh, Florence is our Series 2. Uh, it's got a winch on it and we use Florence principally in the winter for uh, doing the tree work. We've had a programme in the last three years of cutting trees down that affect the light that go into the orchard. So Florence is our forestry vehicle. Also with a back down we can uh, get an indecent amount of wood in the back of it. Uh, Tarquin, Tarquin's for bumbling around. Uh, Tarquin is our short wheelbase um, but it's got a Ford Transit engine in. The very simple 2.5 DI. It's, it's used for trundling about, fetching and carrying. Um, it's just Tarquin really. And if anyone knows the classical reason for it being called Tarquin, it's because somebody once said it was a super bus. But that's a bit of a classic joke. I don't know if any of your readers will get that. The reason why people get so bitten by them, and, and, and many years ago in the military I said I'd never have another Land Rover or never own one because they're noisy and rattly and they're actually too narrow. Um, it's because it's a platform and you fit it out to do what you want that vehicle to do. Um, the, the vehicles for the shows, okay, it's not particularly powerful, but they've got 180 watt amplifier in them. They've got inverters to run uh, mains powered equipment. They've got um, mixers, so microphones can be used. We can play music to support events. We can provide microphones if people want to have mus uh, in musical instruments mic'd up. Uh, we've got lighting sets on them for running at night. So they're vehicles that fit the purpose we want and I think that's part of the attraction that most people make their Land Rover their personal vehicle. It's what they made it.
So if you're ever in the very small part of England that sells Tardy Big Cider, I really recommend it. I'm not a big fan of Scrumpy Cider myself, but it was really, really nice. Well recommended. And a great day out as well. All that remains really is to go through our competition. Who Last week we asked people to just share the show, and as always, many of you got involved with that on Facebook, Twitter, and now on Daily Motion as well, and all the usual places you, you find us. So thank you very much for doing that. Uh, our winner is Peter Phillips from... That was via Facebook, Aim. Yeah. yeah, via Facebook. So congratulations to you. We'll be sending a bunch of 1948 gear your way. As always, if you want to get involved with the show, or you have something interested, or you want to just make a comment about it, you can reach us on Facebook and Twitter. I'll put the links on the screen below. And coming up in next week's show, we'll be really kicking off our overlanding features. We'll be hearing from the guys from the Lizzie Bus, Jane and David, who've completed their five-year journey around the world. And we've also got some special guests as well coming along the way. So that's it from this week's Land Rovers Live. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.